out there. <laughs> Those lights are very blinding. <laughs> but I'm glad you're here tonight. We worship the Lord. How great is our God. How great is our God. We have enjoyed this week. We have a few thoughts to share with you tonight. It's just kind of a challenge as we wind down this week. And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So are we ready to follow the Lord anywhere? We need to see the need, catch the vision, catch the burden that he wants us to have. This last August was the general council in the U.S. for the Assemblies of God. And the superintendent, the, the general superintendent, he spoke on the missions emphasis night. I wasn't there, but I listened. And one of the statements he said, it was from Carl Henry, but he said with a sense of urgency, the gospel is only good news if it gets there on time. Think about that. It's only good news if it gets there on time. People are dying. We have an urgency to do what he's asked us to do. Another statement that Doug Clay, the superintendent, said, he said, why missions? Because we believe each person on the earth has the right to taste and see that the Lord is good. We've been blessed, all of us. We've heard the story over and over and over again. But some people out there have never heard. So there's that urgency of us to go and tell the good news before it's too late for them. So tonight I want to just share a story with you to you that will be a challenge as this missions convention closes. But what God is doing in your heart, in your life, and what God is speaking to you should never close. You need to keep remembering. I remember so many times of youth camps, everybody going to camp and getting so excited. And about a month later, they lose all that enthusiasm. But God has been speaking to you in different ways. Don't lose it. Keep it burning inside you for that urgency to go and tell and fulfill his will for your life, his calling. You know, he has given you a call. He's commissioning you. He has a design for you. And he will never ask you to do something that he's not going to be with you to do it. He will be there all the time. He has promised he will never leave you. So don't forget what God has spoke to you this week. Keep it burning in your life. As a young man named William Borden did. This story takes place back in the early 1900s. And he graduated at 16 from a, a high school in the U.S. And he was from a very rich family. And there was a, a big fortune that would come to him. And at graduation from high school, his parents gave him a gift of a trip around the world. Now, Borden had come to Christ early on, in, earlier in his life, in uh, meetings with D.L. Moody, a famous evangelist. So while he was on this trip around the world that his parents had given him, he began to see things that he'd never dreamed of seeing. But it wasn't all the wonderful sights that you would think he was seeing, but God began to burden his heart. And as Borden traveled through Asia, the Middle East, and Europe, he had this growing burden to go and help hurting people. So when Borden went home, or before he went home, he wrote a letter to his parents and said, I'm gonna be a missionary. Now that definitely wasn't the plan his parents had for him. And he said that would be the way the rest of his life would be, in service to God. Upon hearing that news, one of his friends said, he's just throwing his life away as a missionary. And that's what many people that knew the family began to think of him. But on his return, 
He went to Yale University, a very well-known, prestigious school. He graduated, then he went on to another prestigious school, Princeton Theological Seminary. But upon graduation from the seminary, he boarded a boat to go to China as a missionary. He headed out, and on his way, he stopped in Egypt because he had a burden for the religious groups that were in that area. And he began to learn Arabic as he was there. But he was only there a very short time before he contracted a bad disease called spinal meningitis. And within a month, William Borden had passed away. Wow, that news went out, went out to America. Um, as soon as it reached America, almost because of the famous, because his family was famous and well-known, rich, newspapers all across the United States posted the story of his death. And it was stated that a wave of sorrow went around the world. He not only gave up his fortune, but himself to be a missionary. He actually did give up himself. And that's what the scripture that we've been talking about, denying himself and taking up the cross and following Christ. He did that, and it did cost him his life. He walked away from a wealthy fortune to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to people around the world. What people regarded as a tragedy, God did work out for good. He took that tragedy and did something far greater than Borden probably ever would have done had he made it to China. Because when thousands of young men and women in America heard his story and the sacrifice he made, they began to follow Jesus and follow a call to be a missionary. So many, many men went out as missionaries because of Borden's life and his testimony. Eventually, um, Borden's belongings got back to his parents, and, they, and his Bible was there, and they found the following things in his Bible. For once, he had renounced his fortune to follow admissions, and he had wrote the words in his Bible, no reserve, no holding back. His father had told him that he would always have a job in the company if he came back. And later his father said, no, you can never come back because you are leaving and going and doing this. And then when he found that out, Borden wrote in his Bible, no retreat. No retreat. Then they discovered in his Bible that he had written something shortly before his death. And those words were, no regret. No regret. You remember the story I told that one night of that girl that had tried and tried and tried for the pageant. She said it is better to fail than have regrets. Borden could say, I have no regrets. I've given my life for Jesus. So we can all think about our own lives do we try to play it safe, or are we willing to take risks for Jesus? When we look back over time, do we have regrets? Let's not live a life of regret. How will you live this week? How will you live this year? How will you live the rest of your life? Will you be able to say no reserve, not holding back anything? giving it all, giving it all to Jesus. Whatever it is, whatever you're facing, don't turn back, don't hold back. Face it and go forward, go forward. No retreat, don't pick the easy path. Don't just choose an easy way to go. There are times when God's will, and many times, is not easy. And many of you already know that. But go forward and got what God is leading you to do. Do not turn back. Do not give up. Go forward with God. Amen. And then no regret. If 
you have live a life of no reserve and no retreat, absolutely no way to go back, and no, then you will be able to live a life of no regret. When this week is over, when this year is over, when your time to go to Jesus comes, can you say you've lived a life of no regret? Live life to the fullest, choosing God's way. Our hearts cry as we talk to many of you and as we pray with you and others have prayed with you is that you will be able to live that kind of life. You will commit fully to following God, not giving up. We need pastors, church leaders, Bible school leaders, students who can say no reserve, Mama. no retreat, and no regret. Can we say, whatever the cost, I will go. I will fulfill God's will. I will fulfill God's call on my life. I hope every one of you can say that yearly, daily, that that's the way you are living your life. Wow, what a story. What a story. That simple story should really challenge our hearts to go forward in the will of God. And I want us to take those three words that Barb ended that story with. And I want them to penetrate deep into your heart, deep into your thinking, deep into your spiritual life. No matter if you go into the pastoral field or the evangelistic field or the missionary field, whatever that call is out there, make sure you go forward in that call and you give it all. Give yourself all to that call. <coughs> Stand with me tonight, please. As musicians prepare themselves, I'd just like for them to quietly play in the background. I want us to take up just a few moments. I want us to make a commitment tonight. It would be terrible if we had gone through this whole week and not made a commitment. I'm going to make a commitment tonight. We as a couple, we're going to make a commitment. No reserve. Don't hold back. Don't. Don't hold back. It's not worth it. The other thing along with this is don't give up. Don't give up. Some of you feel like maybe you're struggling in Greek or Hebrew or some of your other classes. Don't give up. Because God has put a call in your heart, in your life. He sees you. He's going to be with you all the way. Just no reserve. Don't give up. No retreat. And it's true what Mark said. The will of God is not easy, but the will of God is full of reward. Take a hold of that will. Put it in your heart. Take hold of that will. Put it in your mind, your spirit. It's not easy, but it's worth it. No regret. No regret. I like this one. Don't live. Don't live. Can I say it one more time? Don't live cautiously. Don't live cautiously. Abandon yourself to the love of God. Abandon yourself to the strength of God. Abandon yourself to the the call the the, the call of God, the will of God. Abandon yourself. No reserve, no retreat, no regret. Would you just step out of your seat from your seat right now? 
come forward and make a commitment to the Lord? Yes, Lord. No reserve. No retreat. No regret. Just step out right now. Just come forward. Don't be bashful. Let's make that commitment to the Lord. I'm going to make that commitment to the Lord. We are going to make that commitment to the Lord. Just come forward. We want to give ourselves to the Lord and to his kingdom. We want to see his kingdom grow. We want to see the lost come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Just come. No reserve. No retreat. No regret. And as you're standing here tonight, listen to these words very carefully. Be willing to go wherever he sends you. Be willing to go to that hard place. Be willing to go to that place. Not going to be easy at all. Deny yourself. Take up that cross. Follow him. Just follow him. Wherever. And just tell the Lord, Lord, I'm here. I'm standing here. I'm going to commit myself to your will, to your way, to your purpose. I'm here to serve you. Just take a moment right now and just talk to Jesus. Just talk to the Lord.
你把孩子们摆他摆上了祭坛上更加容易。今天晚上，我要你，我要鼓励你把你自己的孩子摆摆上祭坛上，代表你一切都奉献给主。如果你可以的，我要请你上前来，这个前面的地方，我们就称为我们的祭坛。来到前面，把你、把你孩子、把你家人奉献给主。哈利路亚！我们要为你们祷告，让上帝祝福你，让上帝的旨意。一切都在你的生命上行出来。Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! If you are, if you if you've come just to celebrate, just for the food, you did not expect much, but the Holy Spirit is speaking to your hearts now, and perhaps somehow you sense the presence of God. God is calling you. God is urging you. Perhaps tonight is the time you can come out here. Make it a night where the Holy Spirit can impact upon your life, and mark it so that this day, this time, this moment is where you have given your all, no reserve, your all. You've come to the altar, you've placed everything. There will be no, no turning back, no retreat. And I can, I can tell you, after almost forty years serving Jesus. You will one day look back and say, "No regrets." Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I can see some more Chinese families coming up. It's not easy for them to come up with their children. I like some of the missionaries. I know some of you are the altar now. To just turn around, pray for some of them, Chinese, Koreans. Filipinos, whatever they may be, whoever they may be, pray for them. Hallelujah. Let's ask the Lord's anointing upon them. Hallelujah. Some of you students, come. You have an opportunity now. Opportunity now to bless somebody at the altar. Come to the front. Come pray for somebody. Perhaps the Lord has a prophetic word through you for the person you're praying for to confirm, affirm the call upon that person's life. Come, come to the front. Find somebody in front. Pray for that person. Hallelujah! 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 Let's take these moments, very precious moments. Come and bless somebody. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah!
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this week. The deep work that you've done among our students and also with those folks who have come to visit tonight. Lord, I know you've spoken to some of them in a very personal way. Some have received your call. Some have had their call affirmed and reconfirmed tonight. I pray, Lord, that they will not go away from this altar tonight, forgetting instead your Holy Spirit will bring it to remembrance. They will know what they have placed on the altar. They will have no regrets because, Lord, they have placed them to you, for you. You are the Lord God Almighty. You deserve our all. You have given your all on the cross for us. Lord, we come to you, Lord. All this belongs to you. Our children belongs to you. Our life belongs to you. All of our riches belongs to you. Our time belongs to you. Everything belongs to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, touch Lord these words, especially these words at the altar here now. Speak to them. Imprint upon them their hearts today. Let them never forget this day. This 11th of October 2019, when they came to the altar and gave their all to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, there are so many missionaries and so many pastors here, so many people who've given up uh, their lives to serve God here. And many of them are gifted, and God has chosen them specially out so that they can have a special ministry. And perhaps some of you have come with a very special need. Um, I just felt that with this crowd here, um, let's all get our faith together and expect a miracle. Is there anyone here that needs a healing? I want you to raise your hands. You need a healing touch from the Lord. You are not well, you've prayed for a long time. Uh, you see some people with hands lifted up? Yeah. If you need a healing touch from the Lord, lift it high up, lift it high up. So that a few of the missionaries can come around you, a few of the uh, faculty can come around you and agree with you for for your healing. If you're out out at the uh, out of the among the crowds, uh, chairs, I want you to come to the front. Come to the front. If you lift up your, your hands, come to the front. Come to the front, and we're going to ask the Lord to heal you, to touch you. You're expecting a miracle from the from the Lord. Come, come. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. If you really need a miracle from the, from the Lord. You shouldn't be ashamed. You shouldn't be embarrassed. Hallelujah. We have people walking up to the front. Let's pray for them. They've come. We do not know what their illness is. We do not know. Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. You've come asking for the Lord's healing. Okay. Okay. Um, can, can we have people move to that direction too? Those whose hands are lifted up, come. The hands. Anasya Chichi Solaida. Kama Shishiao. Let's lay hands on these people whose hands are lifted up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many times in Asia, lifting up our hands and just indicating that we have a need is not easy. You see these hands lifted up here, here in the middle. Let's make sure, make sure that everyone whose hands is lifted up has somebody praying for them. Hallelujah. Pray for them. Ask the Lord's healing to touch upon them. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabba Rabba Shika Rabba Rabba Hallelujah. 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 Come, let's make sure everyone is being prayed for. Everyone who needs to see and touch is prayed for. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Heavenly Father, you see these hands lifted up. These are hands of faith. They are believing you. And we want to stand with them before your throne of grace. And we pray for he, healing, for your healing touch to come upon them. Touch them, heal them. Some of them may be standing in proxy for somebody. I pray that you will touch their faith, O oh God. 
touch them and honor their faith and touch that person from a distance, O oh Lord, who's being prayed for. Hallelujah. Bring healing. Bring a miracle tonight, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We believe you, Lord. And we come together with our heart, with our hearts joined together in faith, believing that you will bring about that healing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please go back to your seats.